introducing a thrilling addition to the show, Tidbits. Join Joseph, your captivating host, as he dives into bone-chilling tales. Prepare to be captivated by these short yet absolutely true accounts that will send shivers down your spine. Are you ready for a spine-tingling journey into the realm of the unknown? Stay tuned, for Tidbits will leave you haunted and craving for more. Warning, graphic and disturbing content ahead including mentions of sexual assault, abuse and murder. True and scary. Thank you for listening to us on this outlet. We are very excited about the new year. May your new year be filled with love and prosperity. We are happy to be part of your family. We will return right after this. Joseph your host. True and scary. Introducing a thrilling addition to the show, Tidbits. Join Joseph, your captivating host, as he dives into bone-chilling tales. Prepare to be captivated by these short yet absolutely true accounts that will send shivers down your spine. Are you ready for a spine-tingling journey into the realm of the unknown? Stay tuned, for Tidbits will leave you haunted and craving for more. Welcome to another episode of True and Scary. I'm your host Joseph. Always being on the outside world we don't always see what life might be like for us if say we were in jail or prison. Recently I spent time in county jail I had the opportunity to talk for some inmates and learn what their life might be like. The story about to be told is true. I interviewed this inmate in October, a few days before Halloween. One inmate, we will refer to him as Bob to protect his name. But the story is real and shocking to hear. Advisory is warned. So I'm sitting in a cell. A7 core, when an inmate comes in and starts talking to the cellmate I have. We call them bunkies. I was sitting on the metal stool by the metal table, minding my business. When they started talking, soon he started talking with me and I explained about my podcast. He agreed to tell me his story. We're going to run to a break and we will be back with an inmate's tale right after this. I am your host Joseph. Welcome back to an inmate's tale. I am your host Joseph. Bob was 16 years old. Bob caught a life sentence in 2015. First degree murder. His story began in the woods, with him he had a 5 year old and a 6 year old in the vehicle. Who were later become witness to what happened. There was a fight between Bob and another man over a female. Man pulled out a gun and shot at Bob. This upset Bob and set a rage through his body. Sitting in the running vehicle, he without thinking, put it in gear, put foot on pedal and drove straight into the man. Bump bump. Man was dead. It took one year and a half to go to trial. The two kids were used in court and admitted the fact that Bob did in fact find himself at the location and what happened was true. Bob was found guilty. Let's continue with an inmate's tale. Bob was the first teenager in Florida to get a life sentence. Youth defender, minor. The first day Bob felt he was going to die. Being the only white boy in Fort Myers. Blacks, Spanish, and other race of color. The term he used bloods. He only lasted three hours, he got fucked up. People tried to take his food trays, Bob tried to slap their hands away. This was not the right thing for Bob to do. These people took back to the dorm to fight him, they had hidden a razor blade underneath his mat. To set him up. A. C. Confinement for Bob's protection. These guys also use a master lock in his sock, and started to beat him. I'm Joseph your host, we will be back right after this. Out of confinement, Bob transferred to Lancaster the castle. In Trent, Florida. Bob was on the bus, bunch of kids were fighting. While boys being overtaken by men of color Bob got off the bus, lights went to one side, blacks to the other side and as well as the other races. Bob chose to side with the side of color. Gangs. Bob at this time was badly attacked in the cell, unawares of Bob the Latin Kings, saw what was happening and somewhat came to his rescue. They got the attention of the co-bob was taken to Jacksonville, he had lost four and a half pints of blood he was bleeding out. It was afraid he was going to die. After this Bob went back to Lake Butler Hospital on compound. Bob's eyes for open to not trust no person of any color. To this day he suffers PTSD because of all this trauma. 
You're listening to An Inmate's Tale, we'll be right back. One lesson he stressed to me was one he learned very quickly. Don't show inmates you have any kind of money. Buy this, in jail, prison, you can order items off of commissary. Food, clothes, etc. He was approached by some men, they pressed a knife to his neck made him call his parents and threatened to kill or hurt him if they couldn't pay. All for money. Bob spent two and a half months at medical. Bob left Butler went to Lake City. Y.O. Camp Private Institution. Next to Columbia, Florida. Faith-based program. Has extra privacy. They had access to PlayStation, better foods, church two times a week, big screen TV. If you fight they knock you down. No gang member allowed. There is a security threat getting file looking for proof of being in a game. Affiliation tattoo. Anything to show that you might be a gang member they did not put up with that. Bob did two and a half years at Lake City. Then off to boot camp. To a four month program, rest on probation. Parole. Was ankle monitor for rest of his life. They put him through hell. They beat him. ATF was called. Parents were concerned they were hurting their son. Barber then sent to adult prison. Down five years. Taylor C. Jackson slab Swanee. Bob joined work camp. They did work outside city work, Mo, similar to Department of Transportation. Bob made money by bringing drugs into prison. He was called. A dog found them in his shoes. We will be right back to more of an inmate's tale. True and scary. I am your host, Joseph. I asked Bob how did he get drugs? He told me drugs were hidden in trash bags and on location. Bob picked it up and hide it buffing it. In other words sticking drugs up your butt. Raced it matter it was a way to make very good money in prison. Bob made a quarter of every ounce, no matter what kind of drug. Five cigarettes for every pack. After Bob was called, he was sent back to main camp. Box solitaire. 24 hours a day only got to shower once a week for one hour for he and his cellmate he spent 90 days in the box. I asked him how he felt after being in the box, he told me he felt mentally ill. His mind start going crazy. You are listening to True and Scary and Inmate's Tale. We will be right back. I am your host Joseph, this is True and Scary, you're listening to An Inmate's Tale. Bob opened up to me at this point in the story. This made me feel more at ease to continue hearing his story. Again the following is explicit material. Bob was in prison and was raped, which led him to be in a gang. Bob left here went to gang land. In Jacksonville. Where Bob became gang. It was chow time, while I'm being at this location, Bob saw the man who had taken advantage of him. Bob became furious. He asked for a knife, people tried to talk him out of this mind frame, but his associates, had his back. Bob went to get revenge on this person. H04. High custody level. Before Bob had the chance to take action, his associates had seen him raping another white boy. More than 100 times. The associates whacked him. They put his body in a gun box, lock pad, they stuffed his body inside, called the police to pick it up. The white boy couldn't deal with what happened and he hung himself. I asked Bob how did he cope with what he experienced, self-cutting he told me, made him feel like he was releasing this slowly from his being other words he felt like he was cleaning himself. We will be right back. To an inmate's tale. Bob later opened up even more to me, he told me that role-playing with female partners really bothered him all he could see and hear in his mind were yelling and screaming in flashbacks to what happened. Personal relationships became very difficult for Bob. LifePoint inmate is a way of life I've never imagined nor have I had to live or see. I can only imagine how difficult it would be to re-enter the world of normal. How difficult it must be to be accepted back into the life of normal. I hope by sharing Bob's story I know it helped him talk about what happened, that his story, might help you understand what life is like as an inmate, if you are having troubles in your life that that are making you feel uneasy, are wanting to hurt yourself or someone else. You can reach out to us here at True and Scary I'll give you phone numbers and programs that maybe can help you. Counselors are also here to help you. Please have the strength and the courage to reach out for help. Thank you again for joining us here at True and Scary. I am Joseph. Until next time. And remember, don't be so scared and be safe out there. True and Scary Thank you for listening to us on this outlet. We are very excited about the new year. 
May your new year be filled with love and prosperity. We are happy to be part of your family. We will return right after this. Joseph your host. True and scary.